Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of Designing Lighting Magazine, and I am joined today by Andrea Hartramp, the president of the IALD, and Christopher Knowlton, the CEO of IALD. And thank you both for joining me this morning. Thank you for having us. Well, congratulations on the results on getting the bylaws changed. And I saw that the number was 70% approval, which I think is a, you know, that's a statement. That's a very good statement. So congratulations. And I think 30% of the members voted. Is that right? Yep. So okay. that's in line with what we get for our um, uh, elections for board and uh, membership. And that's been pretty consistent over the last 10 or so years. Okay. Well, very good. And I've got on my other screen here, I've, I've got the document up. And as as far as the bylaws go, the most important thing that I see is item 3.02. And uh, this is where uh, IALD members shall, uh, at the bidding or request for proposal, RF, RFP stage of a project, disclose in writing known or potential conflicts. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about this. And is this the major portion of the bylaws change? So, I mean, broadly, the changes are um, a, a package of changes that essentially remove the business model requirement uh, for membership from our uh, bylaws and our code of ethics. And what we're really saying with those changes is that transparency and integrity are more important than how you make your money. So what we're saying to our members is uh, for a long time, independence has been the preferred business model, which means taking fees only for the design work that's that's completed. But we acknowledge that the world is changing and that that business model is not necessarily applicable everywhere around the world. And so instead of ILD saying you should only practice your business in one particular way, what we're saying is you as the business owner know how best to practice. But what we are encouraging is or requiring is transparency and integrity around that. So saying this is how I make my money. This is how I offer my services so that clients can then identify what is being offered and, and why they may be different from each other. But essentially, they get the opportunity to make an informed choice rather than ILD saying the only people that can be members are those who practice a particular type of business model. I would say I, I think that the, the important thing is now it allows the conversation to shift from business model to quality of light and quality lighting design. And, you know, that's at the end of the day, in my opinion, that's really what we should be talking about because that's the value that we bring. How we get there through a business model, that that is one thing. And, and everybody, as Christopher said, needs to figure out what that looks like for them so that they can make a living. But at the end of the day, we should be talking about quality of light and, and, the, and the quality of light in the built environment. Sure. And I want, I want to come back to that quality of light because I saw some things in here that are very applicable to that that I think are just tremendous. But I want to understand the business model, if I may. Uh, lighting designers now, with this having passed, will be able to design the lighting, and they may or may not be able to sell some of the lighting and mm -hmm. earn a commission on the sales. That is correct. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then another area is the lighting designers may be able to design fixtures for certain fixture manufacturers, and then they can also uh, use those fixtures in their design, and that's no longer considered a conflict. As long as it's disclosed, it's not considered a conflict. But in the same way as we previously required for uh, any product design that got a commission or royalty, you have to inform your client that um, it's one of the fixtures that you've designed and by specifying it, you would receive uh, financial compensation through an alternative channel. Okay, very good. Uh, I, I understand that. Thank you. And then I assume there is some sort of ethics committee that will... Um, you know, if somebody violates it, they'll be reported to the ethics committee and then they look into that. What is the enforcement? The enforcement is actually the same as it uh, was previously, which is, like you say, to make a complaint. An ethics committee is impaneled and they look into the um, 
uh, complaint and then there's a whole series of due process that goes on uh, to ensure that that's a, a fair and, and proper uh, process but really what we're trying to uh, a lot of the focus around these changes was about not using the stick but using the carrot uh, and really trying to focus on how we can help empower our members to provide that transparency and also encourage the rest of the industry to provide that level of transparency so that when people are pitching or bidding for work it's very clear why one fee may be different from another and what services may be different because of the way in which they're delivered okay that makes perfect sense okay let's move a little bit to this quality of light because i did see some things in here about uh the environment and sustainability and the circular mm -hmm. economy. Would one of you like to speak to that, please? Well, I, I think all of it is to say, again, you know, it's shifting the conversation to what we should be talking about. You know, as, as stewards of lighting, I guess, uh, we these are the things that we should be focusing on and our clients should be expecting a high level of, you know, if you if you have a professional IALD member on your project, you should be expecting as a client a very high level of design that is responsible to the environment, to you know the physiological and psychological well-being of the people within the space, uh, that that you know honors the vision of the architect and the owners. You know, those are things. That's why we get we get hired and that's what the expectation should be about. So this is just making sure that it's it's part of the conversation. And Christopher, you can. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it brings us into alignment with many of our um, uh, other organizations that we look to, uh, the AIA or REBA or any of the other architectural associations in identifying that we have an important role to play in um, the sustainability sort of journey that we're all on to understand how that, what does that look like in, in lighting? Um, and it's really kind of just putting that in our code of ethics to say, actually, this is important and it is something that we should be doing. Most people are already doing it, but like it's right. important to document that um, and make that a point which our clients and other stakeholders can understand. Well, and establishing IALD members as leaders in, in this exercise of doing the right thing for all parties involved, including the environment. That's, okay. that's a goal. Yeah. And that makes a profession more valuable. 1.03. IALD members shall consider the environmental impact of the use of light and energy for lighting in order to combat climate change and its impact by developing creative, sustainable, and effective solutions in their practice. Now, how does that work if the uh, user doesn't believe in climate change and the user doesn't care about that? What happens? Is there an obligation to, to, to push it? Or do you just salute and say, well, this is what we recommend, but if you don't want it, here's plan B. I, I don't think I've met a lighting designer who hasn't been working on that. I mean, even if they don't necessarily uh, believe in the objective, even the industry and the tools that we have have been reducing energy consumption going forward, et cetera. So it's really an aspirational thing that we're asking people to, to make the best decisions, even if their client doesn't necessarily think that it's uh, an issue. Um, there's still opportunities to affect change in a small way uh, or large ways. Um, but really, we're saying that professional members really should be working towards that. It's an opportunity to remember to educate our clients as well. I mean, I know the proverbial, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Let's get them to the water at the very least. Uh, you know, and thankfully, we do have a lot of tools that whether they you know, are, are comfortable in, in the sustainability environment or not, the, the lighting tools that we're using are going to get them part of the way there. It, you know, it, the, the conversation has gone beyond sustainability to the circular environment and transparency of materials and all the things that, you know, allow us to, again, to, to lead um, with regard to the environment. But it's sometimes it's baby steps and sometimes it's giant bounds. Right. Uh, 1.02. IALD members shall acknowledge the impact of lighting on human health and practice lighting design in a way that promotes healthy lives and promotes well-being by keeping and advancing their knowledge of the science of light and its effect on human beings. 
I just think that was perfectly written. Uh, I don't think you could have written that better. And I do think that will go a long way if uh, if the ILD members uh, will begin, to, and many of them are already doing that. But um, I do think that, um, you know, this is the leadership that IALD provides to our industry. Okay, is there anything else in the bylaws? You know, not everybody's going to read them line by line like I've been doing this morning. Is there anything <laughs> else in there that we want to promote or, or get out to our mutual audience? I feel like you've... You've hit them, Randy. I mean, you know, we're, 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 I, 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 I've already said what I think. Okay. Very good. And I, I thought y'all did a great job. I saw some of the videos that you had posted, some of the video clips, and I thought those were really well done, you know, and informative. Um, that, that's the one thing I will say is, you know, I'm really grateful to the membership because, you know, it's been, it's been a bit of a ride and, We've learned a lot, you know, about communicating with the membership and finding alternative ways to answer questions and engage. And, you know, it's been extraordinary to see how engaged the membership has been over the course of this process with people coming to not just one, but multiple town halls, wanting to get their questions answered or at the very least to hear the conversation and be part of the conversation and you know and 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 the voting numbers being strong stronger than typical voting numbers maybe are for you know this sort of thing i i just i'm thrilled that we have such an interested and engaged membership it bodes well for our future the uh the one that didn't pass was the changing of the name what was what was really interesting and andrea sort of just mentioned this we we did 13 town halls uh, uh virtually around the world and one of the things that was great was we got a really good insight into how people are feeling about being in a membership organization that you know is changing as our demographics change and one of the things that was very clear was um designers is something that that our members feel very attached to like they really clearly identify with being designers of of light and that as also sort of plays into they all identify community as a huge part of the reason why they join so it feels like very natural that that actually goes goes together any final thoughts on this just to say thank you for always you know supporting the iald i always say it to you but i it it, it doesn't change we well, just really appreciate the we, way you support us. Well, thank you. And we love the IALD. And you guys are just doing a tremendous job. And I just see great things uh, in the future of the organization. Mm -hmm.